Thank you very much, Ingrid, for the introduction. So as said, my, my name is Inigo, and this project was actually my, my master thesis last year. And I, as said, I did this at the Basque Center on Cognition, Brain, and Language. So um, for those who are not familiar with functional MRI, this technique measures the level of oxygen that is being supplied to different parts of the brain. And with this, we can obtain such uh, maps of brain activity, where yellow areas indicate higher levels of uh, oxygenated blood and are thus um, um, interpreted as reflecting higher levels of neuronal activity. However, it's, it's important to understand that this is not always the case. So it is true that oxygenation changes uh, are mostly happening in capillaries, which are very small vessels that are indeed close to neurons, but it is also it is also possible that what we see are coming from large veins, which are far away from the neuronal source. This is this is a problem because in the end we are somehow interpreting noise as a neuronal activity. To understand how we can remove these contributions, we need to know that functional MRI data has two parts the magnitude of the signal, which is what we use to produce the activation maps, and the phase signal, which is uh, completely discarded in typical studies. The key here is that oxygenation changes coming from large veins produce both uh, signal changes uh, in the magnitude and in the phase components. However, in capillaries, they produce only uh, signal changes in, in the magnitude. This means that if we perform a linear regression of the magnitude signal as a function of the phase, we can um, get an estimation of the magnitude only of those regions uh, where per large vein effects are happening. This estimation can then be simply subtracted from the original magnitude time series to get a denoised signal. In the capillary, since there are no phase changes happening, we get very low estimations, and thus there is no, no denoising happening. So in, in this study, we evaluated this method on um, activation maps that were uh, acquired while participants had to produce a speech. And this is, this is particularly interesting between, because a speech production areas such as uh, Broca's area and Bernicke's area are very close to a Sylvian fissure, which is this circus that may contain uh, large veins. So we, hi we hypothesized here that um, regions that are close to this fissure might get uh, denoised or the activations might be reduced in, in these regions that are close to the fissure. In addition, we wanted to analyze this method using two different regression algorithms. One is the ordinary least squares method, OLS, and the other one is the orthogonal distance regression method, ODR. So what, what we found is the following. Here we are showing uh, brain maps of, of how good was the fitting between the magnitude and the phase signals. So yellow areas indicate low estimations and red areas indicate high estimations. So essentially high magnitude and phase signal correlations. And we can, we can observe that both methods made low estimations in regions of white matter where we do not expect any large veins and high estimations in regions with, um, uh, where we actually do expect large veins. And this is particularly clear in these slides because the patterns of correlation resembles what could be the superior sagittal sinus, which is a large vein that runs along the entire sagittal periphery. Um, even though we, we found uh, similar estimations with both methods in similar regions, we found ODR to, uh, to, make, uh, to, to give much higher R square values. So this means that ODR performed a much uh, efficient denoising as compared to OLS. In this, in this figure here, we are showing the statistical differences between raw activation maps, so essentially those without any denoising against 
uh, those obtained after ODR denoising. And we can see that most of the differences, so most, most of the denoising was in this region right here, which is, which is called the parts of Italis, and it's very close to the Sylvia fissure. And this was found uh, as well in the OLS denoising, but as you can see, this was uh, in a much weaker way. So the conclusions of this study are, well, first of all, that activations in the parts orbitalis during speech production tasks could have been previously influenced by uh, large vein effects. Second of all, that ODR is in principle more appropriate than OLS for denoising purposes. And lastly, and the main take home message I would like you to get is that these kind of methods can be efficient to, uh, to improve the accuracy of brain activation maps. So having nothing further to add, I will be very happy to, to answer any questions and thank you very much.